Love it. VOA1, the hits. Welcome to Learning English, a daily 30 minute program from the Voice of America. I'm Ashley Thompson. And I'm Dan Novak. This program is designed for English learners, so we speak a little slower and we use words and phrases especially written for people learning English. On today's program, John Russell tells us how climate change is changing the diet of polar bears. Then, Dan Friedel and Gina Bennett present this week's health report. We close the show with the lesson of the day from Andrew Smith and Jill Robbins. But first, here is John Russell. A new study suggests that the climate change diet might not be good for polar bears. With Arctic sea ice declining, many polar bears have to go to land for their diets during parts of the summer. A study looking at Hudson Bay polar bears tried to figure out if the creatures can keep their healthy weight levels on such a diet. Researchers found that the majority of the creatures are losing weight no matter what they do to try to increase it. Some bears find a lot of food, berries, eggs, seabirds, and even caribou antlers. But such foods take a lot of effort. The bears use so many calories trying to eat that they end up losing weight and burning more energy than they take in, the study says. The findings appeared recently in the publication Nature Communications. Other bears go into a time of semi-hibernation, but they also lose weight. So, either way, eating different foods or sleeping a lot does not work, said the study's lead writer, Anthony Pagano, of the U.S. Geological Survey. Researchers found that 19 of the 20 bears studied dropped an average of 21 kilograms over three weeks of being studied. The research observed their calorie intake, energy use, and respiration in the wild. The bears lost about 7% of their body mass on average in just 21 days, the study found. Polar bears try to keep up their weight in the summer after a spring when they eat a lot and gain weight. In the area of the Hudson Bay where researchers studied, lack of sea ice has meant polar bears are on land three weeks longer than in the 1980s, Pagano said. Usually, Polar bears eat high-fat seals while based on sea ice near where the seals are. Hunting is especially good in the spring when seal pups are young and have not yet learned to swim away from the ice base, Pagano said. Last September, when Arctic sea ice hit its yearly low, there was about 2.6 million square kilometers less sea ice than the same time in 1979, the National Snow and Ice Data Center says. The United States Fish and Wildlife Service lists polar bears as a threatened species due to the loss of its sea ice habitat. This paper clearly shows that polar bears cannot adapt to the pace of change in the Arctic, and that the bears are already using everything they have to stay alive, said University of Alberta biologist Andrew de Rocher. De Rocher was not part of the research, but suggested it was important and done well. This is concerning because, of course, it really does raise the question of when will the individual bears run out of energy, de Rocher said. While research shows that some of the bears will survive, 
other bears were basically right on the edge of where they would potentially suffer from starvation and subsequent death. Overall, the research shows that it is unlikely polar bears can adapt to living on land, de Rocher said. I'm John Russell. Many people who find out they have cancer are able to survive the disease because of effective drugs. Treating cancer with certain drugs is known as chemotherapy. The drugs contain powerful chemicals that kill cancer cells but also cause bad reactions in patients. Although the drugs help keep patients alive, they cause extreme tiredness, stomach pain, and the loss of hair. Some even result in mouth sores for patients. These problems are called side effects. After many years of strong side effects, some patients and their doctors are talking to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, or FDA, about finding the lowest effective dose for cancer drugs. In the past, drug companies tested to find the maximum tolerable dose. However, doctors and patients are asking drug makers to think about a dose that will kill cancer cells with less severe side effects. Some patients might prefer the lower dose even if they need to use the drug longer. Jill Feldman of Illinois is 54. She has been treated for lung cancer for 15 years. She is happy to be alive. Her parents died of lung cancer soon after they found out they had it. She said she is always in pain. She said her mouth always feels like it is burning. With the help of her doctors, she receives a lower dose of her cancer drug. But she wants drug companies to research low doses when they are developing the treatments. No one should have to endure avoidable harmful effects of treatment, she said. Dr. Lillian Siu works on drug development at Princess Margaret Cancer Center in Toronto, Ontario. She said new cancer drugs are more precise than in the past. Some newer drugs target a mutation that causes cancer cell growth. Others cause the patient's immune system to fight the cancer. Siu says the question is whether patients can get the same bang for their buck or useful result with a lower dose of a drug. You might only need a low dose to turn off that cancer driver, she said. An FDA spokesperson said there is a new program called Project Optimus that asks drug makers to include patients who receive lower doses in their clinical trials. Sometimes doctors lower doses during the later parts of testing but other times, lower doses are called for only after the drug is approved and doctors try to reduce their patients' side effects. Dr. Patricia LaRusso leads drug research at the Yale Cancer Center in Connecticut. She said the problem with using high doses is that patients start to feel bad, so they have to stop taking the drug. 
during that time, the cancer starts to come back. In addition, some patients get results from a low dose, while others only get results from a high dose. That is called patient-to-patient variation. People's liver and kidneys process cancer drugs differently, which affects how much of the medicine reaches the cancer cells. The challenge is, where is the sweet spot, LaRussa said. A sweet spot means just the right amount. One large group of patients has concerns about doses that are too high. Women with breast cancer that has spread to other parts of their body. That kind of cancer is very difficult to treat. Without drugs, the cancer might spread even more. So many patients must be on cancer drugs for most of their lives. But they want to be able to enjoy their time instead of feeling sick. Dr. Julie Grelo is Chief Medical Officer of the American Society of Clinical Oncology. She is working on a low-dose study of 500 patients who take two kinds of drugs for breast cancer. She said, the study will look at two kinds of treatments, one that starts patients on a low dose that increases if the patient does well. The other starts the patient at a high dose and then lowers if side effects are too difficult. Leslie Kailani Glynn is a 58-year-old breast cancer patient from Oregon. She has been getting treatment for 11 years. She said she will need the drugs for the rest of her life. We want to try to live the best that we can, knowing that treatment is never, ever going to stop, she said. Glenn has hiked California mountains and up high seaside hills in Italy while receiving treatment. She works with her doctor to change the amount of drug she receives based on her ability to tolerate it. She said the number one thing she dislikes is the feeling that she needs to use the bathroom all the time. She does not want to lose her quality of life. Project Optimus asks drug makers to compare the results of different doses. It might sound like a good idea, but the drug companies have concerns. They say carrying out trials of separate doses slows down the development process. Dr. Alice Shaw leads cancer drug development at Novartis, a Swiss drug company. She said the interest in lowering side effects by testing different doses needs to be weighed against getting a helpful new drug to cancer doctors. She said it might be better to get the drugs on the market first. But Dr. Timothy Yap of the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas, said drug companies might not be seeing the problem correctly. He said they need to take the time early in the process to find the right dose. That way, more patients will be able to use their medicine. If the patients are not taking the drug, then it's not going to work, Yap said. I'm Dan Friedel. And I'm Gina Bennett. Friedel joins me now to talk more about the health report. Hi, Dan. Hi, Ashley. Thanks for having me. In the story, you and Gina discuss the idea of lowest effective dose. One cancer doctor uses the term bang for your buck. How does this idea relate to cancer treatments? Well, Ashley, in English, we have this phrase, 
bang for your buck. It is a saying that has to do with value. Some people think it started with the military, where a general might have been concerned about getting the biggest explosion for the lowest cost. After all, in American English, a buck is the same as one dollar. But in fighting cancer, the idea is a little more subtle. The cancer patients interviewed in the story all seem to say they want to get the benefit of the cancer drugs, but also feel like they can live their lives, go for walks, enjoy time with their families, while undergoing treatment at the same time. When people are taking cancer-fighting drugs, they can feel very sick. So in this case, they're talking about getting good effects from the treatment while feeling as healthy as possible. Why has it been hard to get drug makers to go along with the idea of lowest effective dose? So the problem is that the drug companies want to prove that their treatment is effective quickly. After all, no one wants to bring a product out to the market and say, this works really well if you use it for 10 years. People who know they have cancer are scared of dying, and they want results quickly. So when the drug companies do their tests, which are called clinical trials, they try to come up with a dose that works best against the cancer, even if it might make the patient feel sick some of the time. The companies say it is better to do a test for a short period of time in order to prove a drug works. If they test it over the course of 10 years, that would probably be bad for business. So what will this conversation bring about? I think what will happen is that some of the large cancer organizations like the American Society of Clinical Oncology and the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, will continue to organize studies that look at drugs that work in high doses and see how well they work in low doses after the drugs are approved. So that way, the drug companies will have a reason to keep improving and testing new cancer drugs, and patients who need to take the drugs for a long time will also know the right dose so they can get treatment without feeling bad all the time. Well, thank you, Dan, for answering my questions today, and thank you for that report. You're welcome, Ashley. Happy to help. That music means it's time for the lesson of the day on the Learning English Podcast. My name is Andrew Smith, and I'm joined by Dr. Jill Robbins. Hi, Jill. Hi, Andrew. Our lesson is based on our video series, Let's Learn English. The series shows Ana Mateo in her work and life in Washington, D.C. Here's Ana introducing herself. Hello, my name is Anna Mateo. If you've been watching Let's Learn English, you know that Anna has a big imagination. Imagination helps you form pictures or new ideas in your mind, sometimes about things that are not real. So to get started with our lesson, I'm going to ask Andrew to use his imagination. Uh-oh. What if I'm not feeling very imaginative? Don't worry. I'm going to ask you some easy questions to begin. Okay. Would you rather be a professional tennis player or a professional musician, like a concert pianist? <laughs> you know I love both of those. But 
I think I'd rather be a concert pianist because you can play piano for your whole life. But you can only be a professional athlete when you're young. Plus, even good athletes lose a lot when they compete. That's true. Now, would you rather be able to fly or be invisible? Ooh, now you're really asking me to use my imagination. Um, unfortunately, neither one of those is possible, but I think I'd rather fly. It would be so easy to get from place to place. How about you? I, I think I'd rather be invisible、mm. because then、uh, I could go anywhere I wanted to. <laughs> I don't know. It might cause some trouble, though. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so. Okay, so, Jill, I think we'd better connect these questions to Anna and the video series. Yeah, we'd better do that. Lesson 24 of Level 2 of Let's Learn English teaches two expressions you just heard Andrew and me use. Those are the expressions would rather and had better. Would rather asks what you prefer to do or be. And we use had better to give advice in a strong way, almost like the word must. In lesson 24, Anna imagines she has special powers, just like some famous superheroes from the movies, such as Spider Man or Superman. For example, Superman can fly and lift very heavy objects. The lesson begins when Anna asks a young man about superheroes. Listen for the expressions you'd better and I'd rather. Hi! I see you like superhero culture. Me too. In fact, tonight I'm going to the big superhero convention. Are you going? Um, I don't know. Well, you'd better decide soon. Last year it sold out. So. Since we're talking about superheroes, would you rather become a superhero by accident, like Spider Man, or be born a superhero, like Wonder Woman? Take your time. It's a big question. <laughs> I thought about it for days. Okay, if I had to choose, I'd rather be born a superhero. I'd rather become a superhero by an unexpected accident. Aren't all accidents unexpected? I think the young man is pretty smart by saying that Anna did not need to use the word unexpected. Yes, in the lesson, you'll see that the boy thinks in a more clear way than Anna does. But Anna has an excuse because she has an accident. Here it is. And listen to Professor Bott explain. What was that? Are you okay? I'm better than okay. I feel super. Oh no! Anna was just hit by lightning. She had better get help. We use had better to give advice. It is very informal and stronger than should or ought to. For example, Anna says, You had better decide soon. Last year it sold out. When we use had better, we usually shorten the word had for personal pronouns. We use would rather to say what we or someone else prefers to do or have. For example, the boy says, Okay, if I had to choose, I'd rather be born a superhero. With would rather, we also shorten the word would when used with personal pronouns. Keep watching and listen for had better and would rather. Anna was hit by lightning. That is serious. And sometimes people die when that happens. So, naturally, the young man is worried about Anna. You'd better see a doctor. I've never felt better. You were just struck by lightning. And what happened to your hair and your clothes? I don't know. Wait, I do know. This is my super suit. And this is my origin story. What are you talking about? 
An origin story tells the beginning of a superhero. You should know that. You're not making any sense, lady. I would rather be called Lightning Bolt Lady. It'll sound great in a theme song. Lightning Bolt Lady. Don't worry, Anna is feeling great and says the lightning strike gives her an origin story. The word origin, spelled O-R-I-G-I-N, means the beginning, cause, or source of something. For example, the origins of rap music were mostly in New York City in the late 1970s. That's where it began. Anna thinks she has an origin story and superpowers. But the young man thinks she needs help. Now I need to find my superpowers. Um, I really think... Wait, don't tell me. I'll read your mind. You are thinking you'd like to be my super helper. I was not thinking that. That you'd like to live in a treehouse. No. That you should eat more vegetables. Please stop talking. You really should get some help. Mind reading is not my superpower. <laughs> Maybe I can become invisible. Mm, I am invisible. You can't see me. Who am I? I'm not here. You can't see me. I can see you, and so can everybody else. Anna's superpowers are clearly not working. And the boy thinks he'd better go with Anna to make sure she is okay. But Anna would rather go by herself. I'd better go with you. You might get worse. That's even possible. That's very nice of you, ordinary human. But I'd rather go by myself. This is a quest. Every time you speak, I get more confused. A quest is a part of all superhero stories. You really need to work on your superhero studies. Now, stand back. I've never flown before. And you're not flying now. Flying is not my superpower. That's too bad. It's going to be expensive to Uber everywhere. You know, I'd rather walk. It's a nice day. Goodbye, non-super person. I'm not talking to strangers again. I think Lesson 24 of Level 2 is one of the funniest episodes of Let's Learn English. Felix, who is the young man, appears in some of the other episodes, like the duck boat story. He's a great comic actor, I think. Listeners, you should definitely try to watch it. I agree, they should. Now, before we finish today's lesson, let's explain more about the word quest. Listen again. That's very nice of you, ordinary human, but I'd rather go by myself. This is a quest. Every time you speak, I get more confused. A quest is a part of all superhero stories. A quest is a long and difficult search for something. It often takes months or years to do. Quest is spelled Q-U-E-S-T. You know, I think learning to speak a foreign language can be like a quest. You have to keep working at it for a long time. <laughs> That's so true. The good news is, if you just keep studying and practicing in a smart way, you will usually reach your goal. So, listeners, use your imagination. Picture yourself speaking fluently, clearly, confidently, and easily in English. One day, you will get there. And you don't need to be struck by lightning to be able to do it. Thank goodness. Well, it's time to go, so we'd better say goodbye. Oh, but don't forget, Lesson 24, like all of the lessons of Let's Learn English, has a lesson plan you can download for free. The plans can be helpful for both students and teachers. And remember that you can also find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Thanks for listening to the lesson of the day on the Learning English Podcast. I'm Andrew Smith. And I'm Dr. Jill. And that's our program for today. 
Join us again tomorrow to keep learning English through stories from around the world. I'm Ashley Thompson, and I'm Dan Novak. Thank、you